Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Baker and we're going over Romeo and Juliet, Act 3, Scene 2. Here Juliet is giving one of her soliloquies here and she's using the imagery of light and dark, wanting Phoebus to gallop across the sky um, so that the sun will hurry up and set so that she can see Romeo at night. And she's very poetic, very impatient here and she wants night time to come. And it's at this point that we do not see she does not know yet that Romeo has killed Tybalt, so she's totally clueless right now. And this is just like that song in West Side Story tonight, where she's singing about what will come and what will happen. And it, throughout this whole play, this seems to be the only place where Romeo and Juliet can be together is in during the nighttime when the stars are out. So maybe that's how they're star-crossed because it's only nighttime. All right, nurse comes in. The nurse reveals that. Romeo and Juliet, uh, sorry, that Romeo has killed Tybalt, and at first she doesn't believe it, and, you know, how can somebody with such a nice face be such a jerk in disguise, and we have another use of oxymorons here. So just like in the conversation between Benvolio and Romeo in the beginning of this play, we have Juliet using oxymorons to show her conflict of emotion. Uh, dove feathered raven, so a white feathered raven, and that's a bird that's black. Um, you know, how can somebody be so handsome, you know, seem so nice on the outside, just be so terrible on the inside? And, um... So now the nurse then says, oh, there's no faith, no honesty in men. Don't trust the men. This is just like Anita's kind of voice in uh, A Boy Like That from West Side Story. And yet Juliet then says, well, I'm going to pick my husband over my dead cousin because at least my husband is still alive. And here in this big monologue speech, we find out she's only been married for three hours. Oh, boy. And then she, here she is rationalizing why she is picking Romeo over Tybalt. We get that repetition of the word banished here, you know, and that banishment is worse than the death of all her family and then 10,000 Tybalts. Uh, it's so horrible that Romeo is banished. But again, they're being really short-sighted here and not realizing, like, duh, if he's banished, he's still alive, and then they can go plead their case to the prince and hopefully things will work out for them. Which, as we see, the prince is pretty persuadable, so they should be able to do that. All right, now, Juliet then says, well, uh, the nurse to go see Romeo and give her a ring, give him the ring to let her know that she still loves him. Scene three, Friar Lawrence's cell. In scene three here, Friar Lawrence's cell, Romeo is hiding and Friar Lawrence says, Affliction is enamored of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity, that you are wedded to misfortune and problems. But, duh, like, <laughs> of course they're married to problems, because no one went ahead and told anybody what would happen to make sure that there wouldn't be any problems between the two families. All right, Romeo then freaks out over... Um, the sentence of being banished and he says oh you have a kind prince this is mercy and you don't see it and again Romeo just like Juliet reacting emotionally here not thinking um, about the bigger picture and he goes into a very poetic thing saying that every unworthy little thing can be with Juliet but not him he can't do anything nothing can touch Juliet's hand a fly may land on her hand but from all of this he must fly and this is an example of a pun because we're punning on the word fly meaning bugs or insects and fly as in run away so here we have an ooh hint for later on how will Romeo die in the end I wonder a little bit of foreshadow dropped here with um asking the friar for knife or poison so that he can kill himself now instead of living. Well, then the nurse comes in. She gives Romeo the ring from Juliet. The friar says, okay, go tonight to go see Juliet and spend the night with her. And then in the morning, leave for Mantua, the town where Romeo is banished to. And again, keep in mind, banishment is only six months to a year at most. This is pretty doable, but yet they don't want to see it like that. Okay, scene four is a room in Capulet's house. This is Juliet's um, 
While Romeo is going to go see Juliet, Lord Capulet starts talking with Paris and Lady Capulet. And here we have a complication of the plot. So we think, okay, things will be all right. We have, an, we have six months to a year to get this all worked out. There's no rush. Once everybody calms down, the friar could go see the prince and plead his case, and then it'll all work out. Well, not now, because Lord Capulet changes his mind and says that Paris will marry Juliet, that they will turn all of this sadness of a funeral and that they will turn it into a wedding and that on Thursday Juliet will marry Paris. Today is Monday. Well, Wednesday is too soon to get married, so on Thursday she will get married. This play then, now we can figure it out, started on Sunday. And now, how does Paris feel about this? And this is quite a big big shift from the very beginning when Roy Capulet's like, wait two more years before you marry my daughter. Now he's like, okay, two days you're going to get married to her. Well, I think this has to do with the one that he wants to make everybody feel happy by having a wedding instead of a funeral. It gives him hope that he's going to have an heir to his throne, or not throne, but to his family wealth, because Tybalt probably was his heir and now will no longer be. Okay, because Juliet would then go be aligned with whomever she marries and produce an heir for that family that she marries. So, yeah, I think Lord Capulet's feeling a little bit of pressure here because he needs to secure, find somebody to take over his family wealth. And if he marries Juliet off, well, then they can kind of realign the, um, realign the wealth for Juliet. Okay, scene five. Beautiful, beautiful imagery. This is Capulet's um, house again, and it's Juliet and Romeo saying goodbye to each other. And in this beautiful language, we have all this imagery talking about birds, nightingale and lark, and talking about that it's not yet um, morning time because morning time for them is death. Morning time means he must leave. And it's Juliet who wants to uh, persuade him to stay and saying that that light that you're seeing out there is not really the sun. It's some meteor. So just stay. We have an allusion to the moon here with Cynthia's brow. And then he's like, sure, I'm persuaded. I have more care to stay than to go. And then Juliet wakes up and she's like, no, 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 no. You got to go. You got to go. It's not the lark. You have to go. And um, we get, again, that foreshadowing, more light and light, more dark and dark our woes. Juliet is saying goodbye to Romeo as the nurse comes in to remind her that everybody's waking up and going to come into her room soon. Okay, so Juliet and Romeo say goodbye, and we get some more foreshadowing. Oh, I think the CD thou art below is one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Um, okay, Juliet. We get some foreshadowing here again. Shakespeare setting us up for the future, and when you are saying goodbye to somebody and referencing death, you look like you're in a tomb. Well, guess where they're going to end up later in this play. All right, Lady Capulet enters the scene, and... We know here that Juliet is crying because Lady Capulet um, notices her crying. And so this would give us the stage directions for the actress playing Juliet. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. This tells us that Juliet is sobbing right now. Wash him from his grave with tears. That she is crying so much it's a bit obscene and ridiculous. But dramatic irony. We know that it is over... Romeo leaving as opposed to Juliet um, missing. Uh, okay, throughout the whole conversation between Lady Capulet and Juliet, uh, they discuss Romeo and his punishment, and Juliet is uh, vague enough that um, she's saying like she'd love to get her hands on Romeo, um, and it's not because she wants to kill him, but because she loves him. But she's able to phrase her wording in such a way that she's kind of hiding that. Now Lady Capulet gets to the point of why she's there and it is to tell her that she will get married to Paris on Thursday and Juliet freaks out. I will not marry him and I swear it will be Romeo whom you know I hate as a little aside rather than Paris but gee uh-oh. Now enter Lord Capulet. He comes in. What? 
She's still in tears? What is going on? Her body is like a ship on the sea, and that she is caught in the storm with all these flooding winds and sighs and tears that she is raving over. And again, they think she's crying over Tybalt, but really she's crying over the loss of Romeo. And then Lady Capulet says, I wish the fool were married to her grave. Nice mom. Nice thing to say about your daughter. And then Lord Capulet freaks out on Juliet. He gets very angry with her, yells at her, and you can see the repetition here. Um, unworthy as she is, and proud, and how. Like, the fact that he's using shortened sentences here shows his emotion. And then Juliet's trying to plead with her father, but he won't listen to her. And it escalates then to him saying, you will get there, or... I will never look you in the face, and my fingers itch because I'm ready to hit you, and I wish you were dead. If you do not listen to me, you are dead to me. I will kick you out of this house, and this is ridiculous. What a change from the beginning when he says, oh, I want my daughter to have her, you know, to choose her husband. Well, it seems at this point time has run out, and he's obviously upset over the loss of his nephew, too. So he doesn't want to hear it. He expects her to obey him, and this is not good. All right, Act 3 ends with uh, Lord Capulet also then yells at the nurse when the nurse tries to step in and help Juliet. And he yells at her and says, Peace, you mumbling fool. Go talk to somebody else and leave me alone. And Lady Capulet even says, You are too hot that he has too much of a temper here. No wonder they don't have a very nice marriage. And then he says, I will kick you out if you do not do what I say, and walks out of the door. The nurse then tries to comfort Juliet, and the nurse, having been yelled at by Lady Capulet, or sorry, by Lord Capulet, then sides with the parents because she needs her job. She can't be kicked out, so she tells Juliet that she should forget Romeo and marry to Paris. And it's at this point that Juliet realizes she is truly alone in her household. She cannot trust the nurse, and she must rely on herself. And she will go talk to Friar Lawrence, and under the guise that she will make confession and she has displeased her parents and instead what she will do is try to figure out some kind of plan to get out of this. Again, if you have any questions, make sure you post them, make sure you ask and I will be happy to help you out.